Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and welcome to another day in the fish room. Most of the fish living inside my aquariums were simply purchased because I love the way they look, or I love the behavior that they display. But there are certain fish in my aquarium that have a greater purpose beyond aesthetics. Certain fish that I purchased to do specific jobs and to have specific effects in my aquarium. And today I want to share with you guys my top 5 most useful aquarium fish. The fish that I'm about to share with you guys all have their own unique natural abilities that can be very useful in this aquarium hobby with multiple scenarios whether it's helping you with overall maintenance in an aquarium or just a social effect on other fish in a tank I find these fish to be very useful now there are a number of different fish that can be useful in this aquarium hobby a number of fish that can be given jobs and that can do those jobs in your aquarium very successfully however at the moment I currently only have five fish that I believe work very hard and this is going to be my highlight of those fish so the first fish I want to share with you guys are actually a group of fish that originate from South America. They are a group of cichlids known as geophagus. There are several different species of geophagus. I've kept three different species and currently I am keeping geophagus brasiliensis. This species of geophagus is a larger growing more aggressive species. Most geophagus like to be kept in colonies while these do best kept solo or in mated pairs. I currently have one living inside my 125 gallon grout aquarium. But all geophagus have a special ability to stir your substrate. These geophagus spend the majority of their day plucking through the substrate looking for uneaten foods and that really has a great benefit on your aquarium. All that digging really does a great job stirring up the substrate. If there's any poop or waste it really gets stirred up and your filter is able to collect it easier. And also that constant digging through the substrate removes air pockets and you know if those air pockets collect they can turn into gases which could be toxic for your fish. So these geophagus, their natural ability to earth eat, which is their nickname, earth eaters, that natural ability to just constantly look for food by digging in your substrate is just very beneficial. And I definitely really enjoy keeping a geophagus in my aquariums. Now currently I'm growing out this juvenile. It looks like a female, which is actually a bad thing because females won't really get too big. Eventually I do want to add this to my 350 gallon aquarium and this female will most likely be eaten by my peacock bass as they grow. So eventually I'm going to keep trying to get different types of the same species so that hopefully I can find a male and eventually that male will be living inside my 350 gallon aquarium being very beneficial in that aquarium. So yeah, the first fish on this list is geophagus. Many different types, all the different types provide the same ability in your aquarium of stirring up the substrate allowing poop to be sucked up by your filter and by removing the threat of harmful gases collecting in your substrate. The next fish I want to share with you guys that I find useful in my aquariums is the bristlenose pleco. Now if you follow my channel you may have noticed that I really don't show a lot of attention to plecos. I'm really not a big fan of plecos. I know a lot of people look to plecos as good algae eaters. However when you consider the amount of algae a pleco eats versus the amount of waste they produce, I believe that they're just not worth keeping. Along with that these fish have a high bio load and they're nocturnal. So you have a fish that's producing a lot of waste and most of the time you really don't get to see it. So I'm not a big fan of plecos. However Bristol's plecos are my one exception. Mainly because they don't get as big as most plecos so they don't produce as much waste. And for the most part they are true algae eaters. You have a lot of plecos that as they mature they lose their appetite for algae and they start wanting meteor foods. For the most part Bristol's plecos will keep their algae appetite and um, it's just really nice to have a fish in your aquarium that's gonna get those hard to reach spots. He likes to clean algae on my rocks, my driftwood. I clean algae on the glass but you know when it comes to digging in an aquarium it can stress out other fish so I really don't mind having bristles plecos to clean off some of that unwanted algae in our aquarium. Along with that I find these bristles plecos to be a little bit more active compared to other plecos. I could come when the lights are on and catch it and it's not like a once a month occasion to find these bristles plecos out and about.
The next group of fish that I find to be useful will come to some of you as a surprise, and they are ten for you barbs. I find ten for you barbs to be some of the best dither fish out there. For those of you who don't know, dither fish are a group of fish that you add to your main tank um, just to help your main focal fish. So let's say you have a group of sicklers in your aquarium and they're acting very shy, you would add a group of dither fish, which are usually schooling fish that are very active, fish that never hide, and usually they can help encourage your main fish to be more active. You can also use dither fish in aggressive aquariums. Let's say you have a territorial fish. These dither fish are always moving around, breaking up the territory, and it just allows the aquarium to be overall a little bit more peaceful. So ten for your barbs are one of my favorite species of dither fish. One because of their large size. Um, these guys can get really big, about ten inches, which is more useful when you're dealing with larger cichlids. And you know me, I keep a lot of large cichlids, so these guys are very useful. And along with that, these guys are always moving, they're always active, and once again, they're just a great fish to help relieve the other fish in your aquarium, whether they're stressed out or whether they're all separated in their own territories. These 10 for your barbs, they're always moving. They, they don't play the same rules as other fish where they're not allowed to go in certain parts of the tank. These fish, they have no territories, they're always swimming around. So if you do have a fish that's being over territorial, um, these guys are going to break up the territory. Now this topic is worth the video of itself because dither fish um, is a big is a big topic but ten for you barbs are definitely one of the best dither fish out there and they're definitely my go-to fish when I'm having problems with aggression in my larger aquariums. Now obviously these are only going to be dither fish in larger aquariums. For smaller aquariums you can use fish like giant daniels or silver dollars. The next group of fish that I find to be useful in my aquariums are corridors catfish. And I simply enjoy these fish in my aquarium because they work so hard to get all the uneaten food that fall to the bottom of the aquarium. I currently have four panacora catfish and it just amazes me to see how hard these fish work to get into all the cracks and crannies, to get those flakes that fall into the rocks and underneath the driftwood. And you know, if that stuff goes uneaten, it will turn into waste and pollute the water. So it's just definitely awesome to see these catfish go after it. Eventually, when they do eat it, they will poop it out and then the filters can take it up or I can siphon it out. But yeah, it's definitely awesome to see them getting into those hard to reach spots in the aquarium. And the final group of fish that I find to be useful in my aquariums are loaches. So currently I keep clown loaches and yo-yo loaches. And just like the Corridor's catfish, these loaches work very hard to get food that gets into those really tight corners, into those crevices. Um, I see them all the time just digging and working hard, using their whole body to get this food out. But mainly the main reason why I appreciate my yo-yo loaches in this aquarium is because these guys took care of my Malaysian trumpet snails. Now Malaysian trumpet snails don't really cause too many problems, but aesthetically they definitely don't look good. They just overcrowd an aquarium, they grow like rabbits, and these yo-yo loaches took care of them in a matter of months. And I still have them in an aquarium so that I can still get the benefits from the Malaysian trumpet snails. But I don't have to worry about them being everywhere and just making the tank look nasty. Kind of like what they did to my 29 gallon Hillstrom Aquarium where the, there's no predators and they grow like crazy. But thanks to my yellow loaches, I no longer have that issue inside my 125 gallon aquarium. I want to give you guys a bonus species. This species is actually not a fish, but I do find it to be very useful in my aquariums. As I just mentioned, I bought my loaches to control the population of my Malaysian trumpet snails, but I do think that they are very beneficial, Malaysian trumpet snails, in aquariums. And mainly because these trumpet snails, they burrow, 
and in their burrowing behavior, just like the geophagus, they're stirring up the substrate. And if you have any ear pockets in the substrate, it releases them and it prevents toxins from building up in the substrate. Not to mention these snails are big time scavengers, so if any of the food is missed by your corridors or by your loaches, these snails will find the food and they will eat it. So definitely a great advantage in an aquarium. The only thing as I said before that I don't like about these snails is that they breed like crazy, but you can always either sell them or use them as feeders. I know my Oscar loves to eat them. And of course my loaches like to eat them. So if in any other aquarium they grow like crazy, just toss them in my loach tank and they take care of them. Okay everyone, so those are species of livestock that I purchased for a purpose beyond looks, beyond behavior because I believe that these fish, and I know from experience that these fish can be useful in a number of scenarios. So as always, let me know what you guys think about this video. If you have any questions about what you saw today or any opinions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any suggestions of video topics that you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to learn more about thither fish and just the use of them, let me know in the comment section below and I'll get a video done for you guys. Um, as always, if you want more, make sure you subscribe because more is coming. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.